I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the East End Feeble. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have The Couch. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> Ready to be scared, everybody? <laughs> so, we need a little bit of backstory for this one. Because... <laughs> Uh, Review Cultist here went on a little bit of a, a rabbit hole <laughs> uh, again. <laughs> not as not as deep as a rabbit hole as we did with Red Man, <laughs> but um, I did find some inf- interesting information about this story. So the couch we're we're covering the couch because um, we covering the couch in like a new upholstery. Is it worn out? This couch? Yeah, yeah. Out? We gotta get it refurbished and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Gotta get rid of that tacky nineteen seventies like flowered uh, flower decor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we we found the couch <laughs> through um, a uh, there's a Reddit post uh, out there where somebody made a comprehensive iceberg tier list of like the definitive creepy pasta, and at the very bottom of the iceberg tier, I believe the either the second last one or the fir- or the very last one tier among all the other very obscure ones that I actually think we have never covered like half of the ones that were at the very bottom of this tier. They're sat the couch. <laughs> and we all kind of laughed at it, like kind of, because it was like, what the fuck? Like, oh my God. It's like, it, like it's, it's going to be a creepy like, name it's... compared to all. Yeah. The yeah. It was an oddity. And like, we, we cracked some jokes and such as that uh, about it. And like, oh yeah, we're definitely going to do this just for like a lark. Cause you know, it's, it's, not exactly April Fools, but I mean we're getting close to it uh, as of this recording and so, and like the story getting posted. But like, I then read the story. And I was like, oh, this isn't funny. This isn't silly at all, really. No. <laughs> Actually, this might have some teeth to it, or nails, or razors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So I actually did some uh and and finding uh when you so we we found the story on uh. Uh, it's been archived on creepos.wiki and the link that's at the bottom of this the story on on the wiki uh has the the author of the story known as Johnny with two n's in it like it's j o h n n y uh and then when you click on that it takes you actually to um a archive.org wayback machine uh logged um website or forum uh, forum page from cracked.com so that's where it originally came from. Uh, this story was submitted as an entry for the contest um, uh, for a contest by the author of John Dies at the End, which is a, a horror novel by David Wong or Jason Pargan, as is his pen name. And, and the, the, the contest uh, was basically um, submit a story uh, of something really creepy that happened to you that is supposedly supposed or supposed to be true. And um, the winners of the store of of this comp- this contest would get uh, one of five copies of John Dies at the End. Yeah. So apparently, uh, uh, or the the author of, of John Dies at the End, um, yeah, they made this entr- this contest on Cracked.com's forums in 2006, and this was one of the entries for that competition or that contest, and it actually ended up winning one of the five stories or one of the five uh, one of the five books. So. Um, and in the years that have followed, apparently Johnny, sorry, what? <laughs> no, I said congrats, belated congrats. Because how many years has it been? Uh, well, this is like 2006, so <laughs> yeah, a little, a little <laughs> almost 20 years, near yeah. nigh on going on 20 years. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, in those in the in the uh, the last few years, like or like from from then on, like till now, uh, supposedly Johnny has gone on to say that like and claim that this story is based off of a true story at least in his mind um so or as best as he can recall so um i found that really interesting it's kind of like um uh the the mario (laughs) kind of thing story uh that we covered back in the fall or even like 
kind of it, it kind of now it ha- sort of has like that sort of um uh those those like true ghost story accounts or true haunting accounts that you hear on like various websites and various also like tv shows and stuff mm-hmm. um but uh yeah so that's that's a bit of the background for the couch and like why we're covering it <laughs> um now let's give our initial recommendations for it um I'm I'm actually going to recommend it. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it. Okay. Take a guess. Partial? <laughs> Partial recommendation again. Every time Man. <laughs> Opus likes it and Mikey doesn't, I'm always partial. Maybe my partial way to be on, way to be a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can one of us can push you off the fence to one side or the other. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's pretty comfy up here. I have a vantage point of like both sides of it. Yeah, kind of that's nice. fair. Yeah, well, uh, let's dive into uh, the couch. <laughs> let's let's all sit on the couch and find out exactly what it's all about and such, and why we gave these initial recommendations. Mm-hmm. Starting with the rundown, featuring uh, Johnny. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I suppose it's Johnny uh, yeah. as the narrator. Um, so when when Johnny was about four or five, they were at home with their mom in Kansas, with his mom in the kitchen. And he was out in the living room playing with his marbles on a carpeted floor next to a big flower patterned couch they had. Um, In his excitement, Johnny's favorite marble ended up rolling under the couch. And with his dad at work and the only person that could really lift the couch up to help him get it at the marble, uh, he had only one course of action, which was to just reach his hand out like in underneath the underneath the couch and try and fumble for the marble uh after a few tries of sifting under the couch and no luck he brought his arm out and from un- <clears throat> he brought his arm out from under the couch but something followed his arm uh in fact a blackened old woman's hand reached out for a moment uh, as he brought his own hand out um it came out to about the wrist and it then went back under the couch and came back with a little plastic baggie with a peculiar logo on it that at the time Johnny didn't recognize. Um, after a few moments of Johnny not grabbing the bag from the hand, the hand retracted back with the bag underneath the couch and disappeared. Uh, Johnny walked over to his mother in the kitchen and told her about the incident, but she was quite skeptical. When Johnny's dad got home, he lifted the couch and showed that there was nothing under there except for a bunch of marbles that he had uh, had like lost underneath the couch. Um, years went by because that was that like nothing ever really came about afterward. And Johnny would often recall the hand and even make up little stories about it and what it was. And eventually it kind of slipped into like a half memory or a dream of his. Like he just kind of chalked up to like being like a childhood dream or like some kind of a half memory. But then closer to the present day, Johnny mentioned it to his mom and she remembers the events. She also went on to explain that they had gotten the couch from an estate sale of of an old woman who had died on the couch. And after Nair had told his mom about the event when he was when he was young um, and about the hand and stuff of that. They had actually, like, soon after, got rid of that couch. <laughs> Just because it kind of freaked them out, I guess. Yeah. Um, what freaks out Johnny nowadays most about this entire encounter is that he now remembers or, or now recognizes the logo on that little baggie for what it is. It's a logo from a hardware store for utility razor blades. Finn. So, um... That is our rundown of the couch. And uh, I suppose we move on to <clears throat> everyone tolerates the grammar inquisitions at this point. Um, Mikey, D stands for evil. Uh, I have a conjunction junction. Okay. And next stop, conjunction junction. Doot, doot. But after much internal struggle and debate, I have come to the conclusion that there are things in life that simply can't be explained with reason, at least 
in the form in which we know it. And when it is gone, we are left alone in the dark, and everything we would scoff at by daylight suddenly becomes very believable. It was just Mommy and Daddy and me living in our little house in Great Bend, Kansas. It was the middle of the day, summer, hot, boring. But there I was, swishing the marbles back and forth, happily bouncing them into each other. It was a slim hand with tapered fingers, a woman's hand. It was gnarled and wrinkled, as if aged, and it was dead black. It waited, as if expecting me to take the bag. But here's the scary part. But here's the part that truly frightens me, even to this day. And recently, as in a few years ago, I saw the same logo again on what looked like the same type of bag in a hardware store. It was a bag of utility razor blades. Finn. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I was, so, so when you started that, 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 uh, that uh, conjecture junction, I, I seriously thought we were going to go with, like, get like a, a squirrel level, like fun bit where it's like, uh, like, uh, like, like talk about like oh these like you know, like the creepy things that make you like shatter your your sense of reality and stuff like that like that kind of stuff at the beginning of the story uh like those kind of sentences and then like get like something like it was my favorite marble <laughs> but then you were like actually and they kept going like to like like it started cutting to like sentences that were more about like the creepy hand and then like the baggy and like it scares me to this day i am terrified of it and to, uh, recently, I found out about the logo, and then it goes into like the logo and being about like razor blades. It's like, holy shit! That's this 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 uh, conjecture section rundown is way scarier <laughs> than I expected to be. Like it's yeah, more actually, dark. Like, it all properly for some reason. <laughs> yeah, there were enough uh, sentences that in this story that started words started with words that they probably shouldn't, and that's why Mikey lists these sentences in a row. It sometimes comes out with hilarious results. Yeah. Or when sometimes it's like it, dark results. <laughs> yeah, when I was hearing it, he was talking about the marbles, playing with the marbles, and then he's like, "It was a hand." Like he hasn't changed subjects, so like <laughs> these this these marbles he's playing with are just disembodied hands that he's just rolling around <gasps> on the ground. That's how I saw. It. Like, oh, that's cool. That's creepy. <laughs> it's like just like clenched fists, just like rolling yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, we're gonna go into some like. My own personal childhood nightmares in our actual thoughts coming up. Yeah, no, by no, the way, I kind of expect. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I think you guys all know, and I've brought up in the past about my my childhood nightmares about hands. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, gamer, I guess you're up. Yeah, I got one. Maybe I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's on a again on the fence. I... Huh? <laughs> Oh, Again, on the fence. Well, it's, it's because it's I, I know, I know. Something yeah. that I don't fully understand. Okay, well, yeah. What is it? Yeah, because like I don't know how to use these correctly. This might be wrong. It seems wrong to me. I'm sure I'm wrong. Telling, saying that this is wrong, so you can tell me if I'm wrong about this wrongness. But um, the quote is: "I was very young, semicolon, only four or five, comma at most, comma before either of my siblings were born." Uh, I, so, I think, yeah, okay. Yeah, so as far as my limited and poorly educated mind goes, I think that this is an incorrect use of a semicolon, I think, because like um, it, it should be used to connect uh, two like-minded sentences that's that you would be connecting with a but, so, or an and or something like that. Meanwhile, this um, almost they... sounds like it's supposed to be in brackets or should just be commoed out. Yeah. Well, he is saying he's very young and he was only four or five to elaborate on how young he was. So it is that part is connected. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know. It just sounded so, weird to me. Yeah, I I think it's it's used correctly, but 
as, as has been pointed out to us via a certain email from a certain person <laughs> who's the editor of a fan. <laughs> Hi, Jess. <laughs> um, uh, we like semicolons are a mystery to us <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Just because, like, reading that and hearing it in my head, the first thing I thought of, like, this sounds like it's supposed to be in brackets, but, like, that's the end of the sentence. So then the entire sentence would just be, I was very young, period. It, technically, that's the sentence because everything else is in brackets. That's why my correction that I did was, I was very young, like only four or five at most, before either of my siblings were born. Yeah. Yes. Also, I feel like the comma after four or five doesn't need to be there, because as it reads, it's, I was very young, only four or five at most before either of my siblings were born. Meanwhile, you would be saying, like, only four or five at most, before either of my siblings yeah. were born. That's where the break would be. So, they may have left there, left. I'll kill, <laughs> but, uh, like, okay. I won't die on the semicolon. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, the semicolon, uh, actually, I did pull up uh, the email <laughs> that, that gives us a simple um, explanation for a semicolon. Um, uh -huh. They can be used in place of periods between two related sentences. <laughs> So, yeah, but, but that's a very simplified the entire equation. paragraph is related. So you could theoretically, with that logic, semicolon out an entire fucking paragraph because it's all related. I, I, honestly, the word the word is like I'm I'm now reading the par like the sentence in the paragraph. It's like I was very young. Period. Like that's only not four or five at that. most. But yeah, but like oh, yeah, but like I but that's why you would use a semicolon rather than a period because semicolon isn't a period. It doesn't end the sentence. It it continues on. It's a break, but it's not a comma because it look like, cause there's two more commas after that. Like, it's like, I was very young, semicolon, only four or five comma at most comma before either of my siblings were born. Honestly, that, that seems right to me. Um, just because of, like the semicolon is sort of like, I was very young. And then the next thing is uh, at ex like, is kind of giving more details about that. So it's almost like how we use colons to like, uh, like, I was like, Here's a list of things, colon, and then you get a bunch of like thing, the like descriptions or things. So I, th I think it's correct the way it's used, but <laughs> it probably is. But I just hate it, and I don't Fair. think it's, it's like natural. Write it because like you don't, you wouldn't be talking like that, you know. If you're just uh, saying I mean, this like you're talking to someone, you'd be saying I was very young, like four or five at most, before either of my siblings were born. That's how you would say it, and that's how I corrected it. And it sounds fine to me. But okay, yeah. I don't know. See, like, yeah, for for me, like, yes, that's how you would say it. But like, when you write down, uh, you you may not want to use the like four or five. You may want to like uh, make it a little bit more formal, a little bit more fancy. So you use a semicolon in place of the like, yeah, as well. Yeah. But either way, that's all I got for grammar. Okay. Uh, then on to actual thoughts. Going to uh, start with this one here. Uh, this quote here. Logic for all the for all the trust we place in it is really nothing more than a candle, all too easily snuffed out. And when it's gone, we are left alone in the dark, and everything we could we, everything we would scoff at by daylight suddenly becomes very believable. All right, before I wax too melodramatically, here's my story. And to that, I say a bit a bit too late on waxing melodramatically, but sure, let's let's continue the story. <laughs> let's, let's hear the story. <laughs> he's not saying that he hasn't. He just he doesn't want to wax more melodramatically, so he's stopping his melodramatic waxing then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's just kind of funny. It's like, all right, now I'm not gonna. I'm, not, I'm done melodramatically uh, waxing. Now here's the actual story. It's like, well, I mean, all right, let's continue. <laughs> Uh, much like my next, like how let, let's continue to my next quote and comment. <laughs> Why I was trying to roll marbles around on the carpet, I don't know. We had a perfectly good linoleum floor, after all, but there I was swishing the marbles back and forth, happily bouncing them into each other. Then, in my overzealous enthusiasm, I rolled too hard. My favorite marble, the clear ruby red one zipped into the dark space under the couch and was lost. This is uh, seriously giving me some Marvel Olympics flashbacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was mean to sit there and watch like that entire series 
on YouTube. Oh man. <laughs> it's like oh man, it'd be really funny if this story just became like a creepy pasta like about <laughs> the Marble Olympics. <laughs> so specific and random. Yeah. Uh somebody out there, please write a creep pasta about the Marble Olympics. <laughs> I want to read it. <laughs> but uh, I'll move on to the next thing I have here. Um, encountering no marbles, I pulled my hand out in disappointment. Then a hand reached out from under the couch back at me. I remember the image vividly, and I suspect I always will. It was a slim hand with tapered fingers, a woman's hand. It was gnarled and wrinkled as if aged, and it was dead black. Not black as an African, black as in dead. Of course, back then, I didn't know that corpses blacken as they decompose. So I didn't know what the black meant. You know, this, this kind of gives me the same kind of like vibes as like the toilet ghost encounter in The Legend of Zelda. <laughs> uh, There's actually a couple of Zelda games, like uh, specifically, I think it's, I think it started in Majora's Mask, but I, no, I think it, it was either started in Majora's Mask or it was in um, the Oracle games uh, where there is like a hand that pops out of one of the toilets that you can go that you, you go past or something like that. And it needs like tissue paper or it's looking for some kind of paper or something like that. And like even and that they even continue that on in Skyward Sword. They're like at the, the Skyloft Academy. There was a uh, like a ghostly hand asking for toilet paper, <laughs> um, which. I think that whole thing was inspired by an actual urban legend from Japan called uh, Hanako-san, which is about like a girl who died in a bathroom and now haunts the toilet. Mm-hmm. Um, also, a little a little issue I have regarding this story as archived on creepos.wiki. There is an image tied to this entry, at least with regards to it being like where where it's listed. Uh, it doesn't pop up on the actual like stories web like like a uh, like web page on the wiki but when you're like browsing through like the various stories for uh on on like in their their catalog i guess on uh on the wiki there's an image like a little thumbnail image bound to this one and when you zoom in it is an image of the the corner of a very flowery looking couch or like flower pattern couch i think even with like a carpet and some of that and that's well and good the problem is the arm that's peeking out <laughs> isn't blackened as described it's it's kind of dark and it's got wrapping so almost like maybe it's a uh like a severed arm prop from like for halloween or something like that um but i i sort of get more of a like a thin mummy like 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 egyptian mummy kind of thing rather than like a desiccated blackened hand um i'm just saying like a little photoshop work could go a long way for like that little thumbnail for the for whoever uh controls that kind of stuff on creepos.wiki <laughs> but that might just be me sitting on our own couch in the nitpick nook yeah. <laughs> About... it's a shame there's no picture on the actual like story itself mm-hmm. yeah i mean is it necessary though or like i'm just saying like didn't you say there's one on the thumbnail yeah, there's a thumbnail. Yeah, there's a little like there's one on the thumbnail. It doesn't actually appear though on the the actual like webs the the actual site where the story is. That's what I mean. It's kind of weird that it's on the thumbnail that's not here. It's true. Yeah, like I I had to actually like dig to find it. Like I couldn't like I had to actually like n- like not look for it on the site where it was, but like go through like the the, the listing and then like open the image in a different uh, tab to actually like zoom it in a bit. <laughs> oh no, I had to use Google. I actually had to use Google image to find it because uh, when I type in the couch creep pasta, the thumbnail, it shows up on the Google on Google images and I can actually like zoom in and get like a better like view of it, <laughs> but you can't actually do that in the wiki as far as I could tell. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. Even like, I guess like an image of like, I, I guess if you were to have an image with the story, like include with the story, like at the very end, maybe even have like a picture of like the couch itself. Maybe don't have the hand, but like just the couch. Yeah, it's one of those situations so, you know, where a very mundane and normal picture can look creepy because of context. Yeah, because like once you're like, or even or <laughs> even uh, at the very end, there's like a photo of like a of a torn of like a, an emptied baggie of like those those utility uh, razors. Mm-hmm with that logo that he did that he didn't recognize until like very like till later on. And then have that showing at the, have that pop up at the very end of the story so that you can get like a proper visual for them. But 
Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll move on to the next thing I have here. For years, I remembered this. I even developed a weird fantasy of little hand people living under the couch. And I, in my childlike innocence, believed that they could that they would catch me and take me away if I ever reached out in <clears throat> if I ever reached into their domain again. Okay, so again, like now I'm getting a, pro- a even better visual of the the uh, the marble hands <laughs> or the hand marbles. <laughs> <laughs> it was an inside job. <laughs> oh man, it would be like it's like if it wasn't marbles, if it was like um does anybody remember those like oddball like those like rubber um, those like grotesque rubber balls from the nineties. Yes, I forgot the name. Yes, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think they might have been called oddballs or some of that. But yeah, like if if one was like not so much a head, but it was just like a, a hand, like clenched fist and so that, and like this guy just like, collected like just the hand ones, and then like it turned out they were actually like they could unravel and like were actually like some kind of sentient creature. <laughs> that would be really creepy. <laughs> um. So, um, but back to the, my, my actual comment for this quote and like the story at hand, I do like the overall setup for the story and I could even see using this in gameable material, uh, again, not just the, with the marble hands or the hand marbles being real and some of that, uh, but something tied to that, um, maybe for a game where you're tracking down haunted or cursed objects and you stumble upon this, where a family experiences strange occurrences around the couch maybe even go as far as as this child's imagination and the child is taken by strange hand-like creatures and when i was writing that down i was like i literally put in brackets wow this is actually delving into my own childhood nightmares about severed hands coming to get me (laughs) because i would definitely have nightmares of where i would or i guess they they were probably like bordering onto sleep paralysis where i'd wake up in the middle of the night and I couldn't move and I was just in my my bed and I'd slowly see like thing style hands um uh slowly skittering up like skittering uh through my doorway and uh up my walls <laughs> like toward me. Yeah, that's sleep paralysis for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a sleep paralysis thing. <laughs> or like I or like uh the for like the longest time I was also afraid of um the space between my bed and my wall at my cottage because um i would have again like sleep paralysis or a nightmare uh where i'd be like half just half asleep but i would feel somebody like um like tap my back <laughs> if i turned away from like i had to i had to always face the wall because if i faced away from the wall that's when they would like creepily like start like touching my neck and like tap my uh tap my back <laughs> that's actually pretty cool yeah I mean, it's unfortunate to be scared like that. Child, but... Yeah. <laughs> At the time, obviously, I was like terrified and freaked out. I now I can talk about it in like a lighter, like in a in a sort of like separated way. <laughs> mm. Um, and yeah, there was even an instance where like I think I put my I accidentally put my hand down into the uh the space and I got and, and like something held it for a moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I I I I think I I blame um Adam's family and the thing or and thing. Oh, I uh, but I think Adam's we... family, like the guy that you know, Adam from. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, not not RPX Adam. No, it's no, not like, like, <laughs> no, like the show, the Adam's family or no, the movies. I legitimately um, thought you were blaming <laughs> Adam's family for a second. That's not a joke. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I blame that. And I think uh, there's a couple of like, Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes that dealt with like severed hands. And there's this movie that I still have not yet. I don't think I've found the title for of yet. Stephen King's Quicksilver Highway, a movie from 1997. And the segment was The Body Politic. But it was like basically like a hand revolt. <laughs> like hands became sentient <laughs> and like it, it was like a spreading si- situation and pe- and they would just like revolt against the rest of their bodies and like start cutting themselves off with whatever implement they could find <laughs> or like dragging the and like dragging the body away like to it to the like to like uh like a saw blade or a knife or something like that <laughs> it was a movie i'm sure it was a movie idle hands is it 
No, although Idle Hands was also one that I hated <laughs> growing up, <laughs> but it was not Idle Hands. It was really weird. Like it, it's yeah. it, it's sort of like a half baked memory in my mind um, that like fuels nightmares. <laughs> I just handle and like, Evil Dead because that should happen to Evil Dead too, right? Oh shit, you're right, in Evil Dead. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it might be a movie. <laughs> it might have been like a, a, a like a, a made for TV thing, but it wasn't like it wasn't like Evil Dead. It wasn't like Are You Afraid of the Dark or anything like that. It was, it was like a movie I saw like late at night. Um, and I to this day I have not been able to figure out where it where where, where what, uh, what it was or where it came from. <laughs> Now that we've gone into my full on like now that we've like deconstructed my own personal nightmare. <laughs> mm. Um uh let's, let's, I'll I'll continue what my my thought here about like using this for gameable material. <laughs> right, that's um, what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh yeah, so have like again the gameable idea is like take it to that next step that the character in the story has where like they uh there are like hand like creatures that like take the child and like you're you're there to investigate and try and find out what happened to the child and like eventually the players have to find a way to trigger the um trigger entry into the undercouch realm (laughs) um and like maybe there are other children down there or like at least their souls that have been like down there for a while as this couch is like kind of gone from like uh kind of exchanged hands as it were (laughs) children have exchanged hands but yeah, that, I, I was. Yeah, <laughs> that's why there was a pause there because I realized like the next thing I was about to say was basically a, a, an unintentional uh, hand joke or a hand pun. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. Um, but yeah, so maybe you have like it, like after the characters like get into the undercouch realm and like deal with these weird creepy hand creatures, they can like free the souls of the children and like rescue the one child that's still alive. Mm. Um, like the most recent one, uh, and then it could even be that this is some creepy nightmare gap or opening to a network of like death ways to the underworld (laughs) and uh, like under certain certain circumstances of death, um, the veil weakens to allow this unfortunate opening to a realm beyond life. And like the hands are actually just sort of that, like a manifestation of that gesture, like take my hand. I'll like, I'll, I'll take you hand in hand to the afterlife kind of thing. Mm but it's like become twisted uh, and what have you by uh, the circumstances of like who died on the couch and such. Um, I, I could really see this being used in a few systems, but right now because Vossen is just like, has infected my brain. Um, it makes me want to use the, the modern, uh, the mythic modern uh, supplement that is on drive through RPG <laughs> for Vossen. Um that I've just been itching to try and use. So like, it, I feel like this could be a good opportunity to try that. Um, but yeah, you can really use this in like Cthulhu or Delta green or esoterist fear itself. Like any of those horror modern horror systems. It doesn't even have um, to be like tied to just a couch demon. It could be literally just any shadowy space that's underneath stuff really low to the floor in your entire house. Like uh, yeah, like a, oh a, god, like a, a dresser or under the bed and all that, because like that's another thing that a lot of people find scary is like there's something under the bed that's going to get me, you know? Yeah, I was just thinking like be all one and the same creature. And the link is well, like couches are often used as beds, so this is just another version of like yeah, the monster under your bed, like you said. <laughs> And then, mm. or if you want to even like go elaborate on that, like it's all been one monster, like the creature under your bed, the creature under the couch, the creature in your closet, under the stairs that like grabs you. And it's always like something grabbing you and pulling yep. you or like either tripping you or pulling you in. So it's like, they're all the same creature. It's just like, they just need that darkness under various objects in the house. Um, Hell, if you wanted to kind of like tie this more to like a Vossen of some kind, you could have it be like a... Uh, an evil or corrupted or like just just pissed off domovoy uh which is like basically like a house spirit in uh in slavic um countries um it's like a, a spirit like sort of like a a, a gnomish goblinish kind of creature that um that helps that usually helps around the house as long as it's given like offerings or if, like the the family is is nice to it and stuff but like they 
as with a lot of like fairy folk and stuff of like that, like if you don't give offerings or if you're a dick to the, or if you don't believe in the spirits and so that, sometimes they get a little rowdy or they get pissed off and they just start like acting out. Mm-hmm. So that could be what this is, is basically just like a pissed off Domovoy that's, um, uh, that's used to being like, uh, being in a, in a, in a friendly relationship or like a, an acknowledged relationship with, uh, with the house that, it, uh, house owners. But, maybe if like some new family moves in or like new family buys this couch that this thing is linked to, it begins setting up shop and it gets pissed off. that it's not getting offerings for like, it's hard work for like, like it's helping things around the house, like in small ways. And, um, uh, no one's acknowledging it because we live in, a, in an age of skepticism and, and don't believe in those kind of traditions anymore. So it could be just like, fuck you guys. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it could just be like a the whole the whole a- aspect of this horror story could just be a like for this game could just be a, a misunderstanding, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is the worst kind, the most tragic kind of horror. It really is. Yeah. Also, just the um, way you're describing that reminded me of like I just, I was just thinking like it could just be a common hob or something like that. Like, um, yeah. have you have you seen? Uh, I don't know if it's a new game or not, but I noticed Game Grumps started playing it recently home safety hotline i've heard of it i haven't checked it out yet it's basically you are um like uh not tech support but you're an on telephone support person that people call in when they have some sort of problem in their house whether it's like um there's some weird noises in the walls um this that and the other and you can tell them oh it's just mice or something but the more the more days you go through, the more that the company like gives you access to more stuff. Like, here's information on what a stair slug is, which is a dog sized <laughs> slug that uh, stays in uh, along the staircase to your basement, or a common hob, which is just like this little goblinoid creature that like cleans yeah. up your house, but like you don't know he's there. Oh, that's yeah, that's basically like a, that's straight out of Boston, like a ho- like uh, like a common hob, a house hob. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Now just like, the North American house hob. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of sound like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. That I, I I might have to check that out. I know Gab Smolders uh, has done some videos. I know, and I've seen. I think Jack Septicai and I think I saw the Grumps um, like like a thumbnail for them when I was uh, on my feed, but I haven't checked it out yet. Yeah, considering the game Grumps have played it, it's probably been out for a year. So everyone else has probably played the shit already. They're yeah. Little- but so are we, so it's fine. I was gonna say, like, we're not much better I'm with like judging. certain things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're not we're not much better with like certain like creepypasta um uh material. Like we still haven't really we've never really covered or addressed uh the, the channel zero show, which is straight we should have at this point, but we've never done it. <laughs> You've referenced it enough that I feel like we have. So can no, we, we, say we have No, we have we have, we actually have to do like a re, uh, al dente real talk sometime about it. Okay. But uh, yeah, I guess that's for another time. <laughs> uh, I, I digress. I'll move on. <laughs> so this is, this is the qu- next quote I have. Then a few years ago, I recounted the story to my mother. She gave me a funny look and told me she remembered it because after all, she had been there. And to this, I was like, I'm kind of, this kind of gave me like, not, I'm not saying the story like ripped it off or like the store or Candle Cove ripped this off, but this kind of gave me Candle Cove vibes, like the original Candle Cove story, where the characters are all talk like talking on the forum about this this weird like uh, kid show and some of that, and then one of the posters at the very end gets a verification from their mother of something weird they saw or did when they were a kid. Like in Candle Cove, it was like, I'm going to go watch Candle Cove now, mom. And then he just, and then the, uh, the mom just watches the kid go and watch static for 30 minutes. <laughs> like, and that's what happens in Candle Cove. And this one is like, yeah, it's the same kind of instance. Like the kid just like calmly walks over to his mother and says, there's a hand under the couch. <laughs> and, and then like years later, the kid, the kid is grown up and asked and like tells like, yeah, I had this, remember this like weird story or this weird thing I I remember from like my childhood about like this, uh, this hand in the, under the, under the old couch. And the mom's like, yeah, that happened. <laughs> I was there. That was fucked up and creepy. We sold, we got rid of that couch like months later. <laughs> <laughs> the next day. 
Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It does say like a couple of weeks later, or like months later, or something, or like sometime later. But yeah, you definitely know that it was definitely like the next day, like after a, after a talk with the dad. They're like, we need to get rid of this couch. Yeah, <laughs> he was very. He wasn't. He wasn't like, like, hysterical about it. He was like stone cold, like assertive that this thing happened. <laughs> Like, I no longer trust this couch, especially after we got it from an estate sale where a person died on it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it was very, very much like a creepy pot. I think that is just like a, a ghost story or like a spooky campfire story kind of trope of just like that getting that verification from your, from like your parent, like, or from somebody or from an adult that was there years later for like confirmation from like a childhood event. But yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's a good trope, or it's a good uh, mechanic or uh, narrative device. And the next thing I have here, uh, oh yeah, this is actually regards to like what the, I was just saying about like them like getting all freaked out by the couch and selling it like some time later. Uh, then she told me about the couch itself. According to her, she and Dad had gotten it from uh, gotten the couch from an estate on or from this from the estate of an old woman who had actually died on it. And you see, you see, this is why I both love going to and dread buying from restore markets or thrift stores. <laughs> you never know if that secondhand item you're getting is going to be haunted. <laughs> yeah, but that's also why you buy from secondhand and thrift stores, because you don't know if that thing is haunted. Hence why I said, that's why I, both, that's why I love going to and also yeah. dread like i love and dread <laughs> buying from restore yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah case in point what sorry the uh the zelda game you was that from a from a uh, thrift store i don't remember uh it was from eb games <laughs> it was close enough it was it was uh, well, it, and it was it was like second it was uh it was uh previously owned so yes hence why what i why i when i when I opened it up and turned it on for the first time and saw Ben on the first save file, I was like, nope. <laughs> just like, <laughs> uh, you can't see it, but I like literally like pantomime me just like pushing with both hands the, the DS away from me on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I love it. <laughs> love it and dread it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a uh, thanks, I hate it situation. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Um. Again, see the whole thing of like, if I have to die, I'd rather die. Uh, I died as I lived, immersed in creepy pasta. <laughs> that will be on your tombstone. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Review cultist, <laughs> Lo- beloved son and uncle died as he lived, <laughs> immersed in creepy pasta. And just imagine, like years down the road after that, it's like. Somebody walking down like the rows of cemeteries and so that checking out like all the different cem- like like tombstones and stuff of like that and reads that and I'm just like what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> was was it an unfortunate like spaghetti factory accident? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I don't even know what creepy pasta is at that point. Yeah, like it's at this point, like the the lingo's changed, so it's like it's gone. It's it's changed from like sp- uh, from a uh, creep pasta to like something, some other branding, but <laughs> or or just somebody that's just not in the know, like internet wise about it. <laughs> Or, or the people and the people that know, it's like it's like that scene. It's like that meme uh, with like uh, Mr. Fantastic. It's like uh, immersed, uh, died as he lived, immersed in creep pasta. It's like, uh, it's like he doesn't know. So it's like, oh, I guess he died in like an unfortunate spaghetti uh, factory accident. And then it's like the 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 same image, but it's been like filtered through like black and white and like some distortion. And it's just like again, like immersed, uh, died as he lived, immersed in creep pasta. It's like if you know, you know. <laughs> It's like what happened say, here. That's what I hate to say. That is not Mr. Fantastic. No, you're right. It's Mr. Incredible. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Man, I am so off today on like it's referencing. <laughs> oh man. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> no problem. Holy shit. <laughs> you got half it right. It's Mr. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, all right, I'm going to move on to my last note here. <laughs> um, this is about the, uh, the sort of the ending bit we get. Um, but here's the part that truly frightens me, even to this day. The part that I have to try so hard to get out of my mind some nights. Remember that bag? The hand pushed towards me? I've never forgotten the logo that was on it. And recently, as in a few years ago, I saw the, the same logo again on what looked like the same type of bag in a hardware store. It was a bag of utility razor blades. Okay, so that that's basically the end of the story there. We get that little like that little revelation or that little like kind of uh, uh, reveal, I suppose. Um, this actually makes that this actually when I read this the first time, it kind of gave me a slight shiver, but like in a sad, creepy way. Like, um, cause t- to me, when I, when I read this, it, to me, it insinuates that, um, the ghost killed herself with razor blades and like, that was mm. what was handed to her and stuff like that. Like, so like she maybe for some reason asking to like, like, would you be a deer and get rid of this bag? I don't need it anymore. Like in a sad, creepy way <laughs> or that's like, <laughs> that's, that's how I saw it. But also <laughs> like, please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> wow. Or as just like again, just like it's it's all that was left, or like or like all that was like left. Maybe maybe it's that bag is somewhere inside the upholstery, like or like under like it was just like buried in the the the, the cushions or something like that. And so it's sort of like a simulacrum, or like it's the it's not actually the couch that is keeping this ghost bound. It's that baggie that's like in the couch <laughs> that is actually the ghost's focus. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, no, it just it, it made. Uh, Cause we get that little like bit of detail of like, Oh, it was a, you, they were, it was a little baggie that the ghost was giving of like these razor blades. I was like, Oh, that probably means that's how the ghost died or how the, how the woman died. She slit her wrists and died on the couch. Yep. And to me, that's like it. Like, first off, I get kind of like squeaky whenever like razor blades in, uh, and, and that kind of insinuation come out because like, I, I hate it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I've never, I've never had to, like, I've never done any of that kind of shit. Or and I, but like, and I'm not, I don't think I've had any family members that've ever like done that kind of stuff. But I just like have a very visceral reaction when it comes to like uh to the the implementation of razors to wrists. I don't know why. It just uh just creeps me fuck out, <laughs> squeaks me out. I mean, it's not a good time. No, it isn't. Uh, I, I I think it's just like yeah. I think maybe maybe there's some kind of like. Uh, reaction to it but yeah it it'll, it it is a very strong uh type of symbolism for like suicide and such maybe yeah. that's where it comes from um it's equivalent to like like uh like a japanese what's a the japanese um form of it seppuku oh yeah seppuku yeah seppuku, yeah it's like the western equivalent of that almost but like God. way more like mundane and like frequent one i guess i don't know yeah yeah i don't know yeah but i, I get what you're saying it's like this, it's it's something that is it, it's a very very strong symbol of like self-harm in, yes. in the west uh and i'm sure it's also like also across the world but like specifically oh, sure. like for us like in america and some of that it's in north america it's very uh un- unfortunately it's very common yeah. um and i think maybe that that's also like why because at, maybe that's why it punched me so much is because early on because it's describing the, the hand is like this old frail like blackened decomposed body or like decomposed hand i just and and then we find out that it was an old like a woman like a, a woman who had died i assumed that it was like an old woman who had just passed away on the couch and then to get this real uh, this sort of reveal it's like oh no it was self-inflicted she didn't die peacefully <laughs> um of like natural causes she died of she likely died of self-harm and that makes this not just it makes it creepy in a very tragic like kind of like in a very tragic way yeah um so it gets me on like several levels i think um also in regards to the the ghost handing the baggie off i didn't see it in either of the ways that you saw it i saw it as really like a more um uh malevolent way as in like the ghost is handing razor blades to a child. The child oh. is going to accidentally hurt himself. See, is there? So the thing, the thing about the story is like it. 
I I interpreted that it was like a see-through bag, so there was nothing in the bag. If there had been, it, it doesn't say it, but if it had mentioned that it was an opaque bag, like there was no, like you couldn't see through it, but there was something, there maybe it was something in the bag, like that makes it that much more. That makes that hits that makes the reveal at the end much harder because then suddenly you get more malevolence. Like here, child, <laughs> like that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, because I saw like, it as like basically like a Walmart bag, like that kind of like just a completely solid <laughs> like gray sort of bag. Okay, yeah, like that kind of plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that makes it so much worse honestly like if that's because that's and that's also very in tune with like supposed like ghost encounters and or like ghost uh nature and stuff like that because ghosts who die in that kind of way they they die in misery usually it's like usually like the strong emotion of like sadness and, and misery and that is an infectious like curse like thing when they die when they're ghosts so they need to have it they need to spread that infection or that 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 sadness so or they have to spread that misery um, to to feel anything better. Mm. So yeah, that makes it even more like kind of malevolent and stuff like that than what I was thinking. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> I'm the dark one here today for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my actual thoughts. <laughs> so, Mikey, these stands for evil. What you've got? All right. Uh, well, I'm not going to do my notes in order. I'm just going to do them uh, based on the last thing that was said, which was, uh, so it's assumed that the person died in the couch and used razor blades. Yeah. Um, but there's no mention of blood stains all over this couch. This is true. Like, they can not reupholstered. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they can get couches clean, especially if it's an estate sale. Like if they said they got it from an estate of a, an old woman. The estate likely had the couch reupholstered. There wasn't too much blood. <laughs> she would just throw it out. Like in not some cases, yeah. It. In in some cases, yes. Uh, yeah, it is. It is very peculiar. Like, but that is something that has that does happen in real life. Like they do a reupholster, um, furniture that somebody has died on <laughs> so yeah um now the the next thing is with the plastic bag reveal at the end that it was for razor blades uh from my experience razor blades don't come in plastic bags they're usually in either a hard plastic casing or in cardboard because yeah. it, they would rip right through a plastic bag. Yeah. And the thing is, the logo is the logo for the manufacturer of the razor blades. So it wouldn't be in a plastic bag. Hang on. I'm actually going to Google this. <laughs> <laughs> like 1980s, 1990s. <laughs> yeah, the only way that they would be able to be in a plastic bag is if they were also in a little cardboard box inside the plastic bag. You know what? Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Um, I, everything I'm, I, I could be wrong. Like if somebody out there can find something, can, can find a, uh, an image or something of something that is, that is contrary to what I'm finding right now on, on line. Um, I'm going back like 1990s, 1980s, 1970s, plastic bags, utility razor blades on, on Google images. And all I'm finding is either see-through plastic containers or cardboard mm -hmm. boxes. <laughs> I'm yeah. not seeing a baggie as described in um in the in the story. <laughs> yeah. Hence why I thought it was more like a uh, a store's little baggie. Like you buy something and you want a bag mm. for that, sure. Okay, yeah, I can yeah, see that too. But, yeah. it, but then th the problem is that it's insinuated that it's the manufacturer of the blades because he only saw that symbol on razor blades in the store. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe maybe if it had been correct, maybe if it had been like kind of um, uh, it had been tweaked or or, or re like written the way so like as a as a kid he didn't recognize the little metal things that were in the bag, but that's why like it, it keeps him up at night and why it, like for years because he realizes now as he as he got older he realized 
what those metal things were because he's seen them multiple times over the course of his life. They were razor blades. <laughs> like but he if he had actually seen them, if they were in a clear plastic bag. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, but if he'd seen like these little metal things, like poking out through the little plastic bag or something like that, uh, as a kid, like, and then you save that for, for the, sto- for the sake of the story. Cause he's writing the story to be kind of a spooky story. He would save that revelation until the very end of like, I, uh, growing up, I finally realized what those metal things were. It was razor blades. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly yeah. just kind of took it for uh, with a grain of salt. That, like, okay, I guess like utility razor blades from hardware stores are sold in like a heavy plastic bag or something like a heavy, a heavy plastic little bag. <laughs> Like no, yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been I've been proven wrong. Um, yeah, so so that's my issue with the ending. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then my next issue um, is with the mom remembering something that happened years ago in regards to a couch that they only had for a couple months. Um, that to me is highly unlikely, uh, because human memory doesn't usually last that long and it's been years. So unless she has a constant reminder about this couch for some reason, um, it's highly unlikely that she would remember. It's also possible that she remembers because it's a traumatic event. That right there. <laughs> also, I can definitely uh, I can counter that with my own mother's memory of things I did as a baby that she 100% remembers, despite it only being referenced one time. And then whenever like every like more recently, like when we had like uh, family, like just just family, like conversations with like relatives and stuff. And she's like, oh, remember when Cultus was a wee baby and he did this thing and this thing. And I was like, how the fuck do you remember that? <laughs> it was like, oh, it was something you did that like stayed in my memory. Like mothers have this instinctual like, well, thing to like remember small like events that like, and, and especially with like this, the case of this story, something that stands out in the, in, in the childhood <laughs> of that, of, of their kid. <laughs> Yeah, but it's more something that um, stands out because it's not something the kid would normally do. But, and I guess that's partial because it said he was a quiet kid growing up and he just walked up like, there's a hand under the couch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a hand under the couch, mommy. A little, like an old woman's hand is like, oh, fuck that. What the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 so I feel like she'd remember. Yeah. 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 I'm in agreement with, with Gamer on that. Like, it's to, it may, it may not really, it, it's, it's a very minor, but it still probably would be like a freaky, maybe not traumatic, like borderline traumatic kind of freaky event for the mother as much as the child. Because <laughs> the mother is like a little bit more like, um, like she was conscious aware about of the it. Spookiness at the time where the child yeah. wasn't. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like again, the niece cultus has done some things when she was a baby. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but that shit's gonna stick with me. <laughs> she has <laughs> <scarred> she's <laughs> what? She has scarred you. Yeah, I still remember <laughs> when she was talk when when she was like three or four, actually about the same age as this this kid, and talking about like the stick witch that lives in her closet, and it at night it come it opens the closet door and crawls around her her ceiling. And is like this weird thing that's made of sticks and and spider parts and stuff. <laughs> that shit's staying in my brain for it. Like I'm bringing that up at her at her wedding. <laughs> it's literally just a daddy long legs. Yeah, but for her, One like spider. Yeah, or like again, like the, the there's countless other things like that. Me and her mom both like have have heard her say that we both like years later we're still recounting. <laughs> Like, remember when when niece cultist did this? I was like, yeah, that was fucked up and weird. It's like, we are you, we are definitely we definitely have um uh a niece slash daughter who is just like really fucked up and creepy. <laughs> but uh, we've definitely raised her to be to like spook to to be to like spooky things. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> no, not to like like start throwing it like just, like throwing it at this thing. But like I to I, I, along like along with gamer here, I think like. You're not giving the uh, the parent uh, credit for like remembering 
weird isolated things in a childhood's in a childhood's uh uh life. <laughs> well, it, it it just doesn't resonate with me. Okay, that that's fair. All right, so the next thing uh bringing it back to the title. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the couch. Uh, the couch. But before reading anything beyond the title, uh, my mind was thinking, what possible creepiness could this entail? Um, and my mind went to a demonic couch that eats couch potatoes. Oh god, that's that's good. That's a good schlocky movie idea, <laughs> movie pitch. <laughs> that's also a really good idea for a game for like game of material. <laughs> Just like <laughs> this couch has passed hands like multiple times. Like and like after after uh, the owner disappears, like what's going on? And it's just like yeah, no, it's just it's eating lazy couch potato like people who st- who sit on it too long. <laughs> Of course it does. You straight up said it passes hands, so hands come out of the back of it as it digests oh. the bodies. Yeah, it's really just a, a modern. It's a modern day mimic. <laughs> oh my god! It, it, I could just stat this as a mimic and be done with it. That's awesome, gamer. I'm sorry. <laughs> there, there's going to be some. Uh, you don't don't trust couches, you know, in, in any games I run. I trust anything in anything you run, it's fine. <laughs> that's that's fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh that's the end of my uh, actual thoughts. God damn it. How do you make things better <laughs> every fucking time? Or like Yeah. I mean, god damn it in a good way. <laughs> wow. Uh Gamer, you're up, I guess. Yeah, see what I got left. Uh, this is just a quote I kind of like. Logic for all uh, the trust we put in it is really nothing more than a candle, all too easily snuffed out. And when it's gone, we are left alone in the dark, and everything we would scoff at by daylight suddenly becomes very believable. I just like the way that's. Yeah, as 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 melodramatic as it is, it's also kind of a very true statement. <laughs> yes, for sure. And then uh, I read this line. We were a young family without much money. Most of our furniture was secondhand. And the first thing I thought was, including the couch, which has a secondhand, and then edit later on. Yes, it does. Oh, no. It's it's secondhand as in... Oh, god damn it. There's probably a secondhand. Oh, god damn it. (laughs) And then regarding... Uh, the look of the hand itself, like a black decomposing woman's hand. What if this happened around Halloween? It's entirely possible that the hand is actually just the mom's hand, who was just wearing a black latex glove. And she just like snuck up behind the couch and just spooked her child. Like Johnny took long enough and was spooked long enough that she could have snuck back into the kitchen as well. It's entirely I, I possible it, that this uh... is entirely mundane. <laughs> It could be completely mundane, yeah, yeah. But then, and then yeah, and then like her. even like <laughs> just to like as a final like nail in the coffin for the for the uh, the joke that they the spook that they pulled. Just, they just didn't like the couch anyways. They were going to get rid of it, so like okay, we just spook the shit out of the kid before we get rid of let's the let's traumatize our four year old child and Hell long yeah. con it <laughs> and, and just long con <laughs> gaslight him throughout his entire life. Yo, <laughs> and then like. We get an update like years later from the story. It's like, so my my mother passed away recently, but on her deathbed, she revealed that <laughs> it goes into this whole how she like it's like, son, I'm sorry. The whole hand thing in the couch has all been a con. <laughs> it's yeah. all been a. It's just been. It was me. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, like it's like, <laughs> it's like, come closer, son. Come closer. I need to say something to you. Gotcha. <laughs> I was the hand. I was the hand. Ah. A long, long con ever. <laughs> wow, that's just like that is almost a dumb and dumber like um, yes, uh, like bit. <laughs> oh wow! I like how like 
you that was definitely um, both mundanifying and also making some critical silly limits. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, it had to happen at some point. Yes, <laughs> we really just ran the gambit from like really dark shit to like wow, goofy. <laughs> we have to balance out the darkness. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what do you expect us to be like scared here? No, and no. What is this a creepy pasta? <laughs> it's not supposed to be scary. <laughs> You sure about that? <laughs> no, I'm not. And yes, I'm joking. Everyone, don't worry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's about all I got for notes. Honestly, I chimed in on everything else. Yeah, I, I definitely think your your malicious take is way better than my uh, like sad. Sim- I, I honestly, I kind of want. It's weird. I feel like the malicious take is more of a comfort blanket, or like a like a safety blanket, <laughs> than like dealing with the actual sad, scary shit of like a suicide ghost. Because one of them, <laughs> okay, they're both ghosts, but one of them yeah. is more realistic, quote unquote, um, because I... it's, it's like it's sadder and stuff like that. Whereas as soon as you put a malicious overtone on it, you can be like, oh well, it's just some demon, blah 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 blah. It's not real, yeah. you know. But yeah. although, actually, to to not not, not to counter you, but I'm going to counter you. Go for it. Uh, often what you just described is actually more what we get in like ghost events or haunting of ev- uh, like haunting encounters on like from like real world hauntings and stuff <laughs> is like yeah, the so ghost you, being malicious and stuff yeah do you believe real world hauntings um i mean honestly i could it, it's it's like literally a case by case basis like yeah sometimes it's sometimes it's just probably an overactive imagination sometimes there's shit you can't explain so mm-hmm. Or it's not easily explained. So, yeah. I want to believe. I do. I am Mulder in this situation. <laughs> I wish I had that fucking poster. <laughs> like the little UFO above like, above, like some forces. Like, I want to believe. <laughs> but, um, mm. so that's, that's all you got then? Yeah, that's about all I got left. All right. Uh, then I suppose we'll move on to final thoughts. Uh, yeah, I'm going to still recommend it. Uh, it's short, sweet, and has a surprisingly good creepy payoff for me at the end, while staying at the grounded level of a lot of those, like, again, like I said, true, in quotes, ghost encounters, uh, which, I mean, this may actually be based on on a past experience by this author, and they've just kind of, like, flowered it up a little bit for this con- this contest that they entered. And, I mean, they won one of the copies of the book, so obviously other people had a similar um kind of uh 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 <laughs> as cultist just goes brain dead for a second <laughs> um similar, similar yeah, thoughts on the story similar like yeah similar thoughts on yeah yeah similar experiences of like of of when reading the story so like yeah who's to say if this is actually like a true event or if this is something that the the author fabricated um even they kind of leave it kind of vague like it's like they say it's true like over the last couple over the over the years they've said it's true but like at least in their mind or take it as you will so like it, it kind of they kind of leave it intentionally ambiguous as to whether the 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 factualness of the story or the the truth behind the story but um regardless that's also a good way of like keeping a story kind of creepy in a uh, uh, for the immersion aspect of it because like it leaves it to the reader to to try and like figure out if they believe the story is true or if this is just a piece of fiction. So, yeah, for me, immersion is like everything. If, if you can't be immersed in the story, you don't believe it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to be scared. But, but yeah, exactly. So that's why I I'm going to recommend this story, Mikey. The East stands for evil. Um. Uh, well, for me, the ending ruins it. Because it's a bag of utility razor blades, which doesn't make any sense to me logically. Uh, Somebody out there, please prove us wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm sorry. Just a quick thing. You know, Brownie's gonna find. I'm gonna hunt down a baggie of of razor blades. (laughs) (laughs) He is. He is a. He is a um, like a handyman, and like he he likes to like like build things and stuff like that. So you like. If anybody's gonna try and find a like a bag like a, a hardware store style baggie of like razor of utility razor blades, it's gonna be brownie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 
Yeah, the uh, that, and then the fact that I the uh, mother remembering doesn't resonate with me. Uh, just doesn't help the story for me at all. Um, like when you take it, there's basically a creepy hand that has a bag underneath the couch and like uh, Gamer said, this could be Halloween. It could be a trigger cheap bag for all we know. <laughs> this is like, just another candy kid. <laughs> <laughs> or this is another take on the whole like uh, razor blades in the candy or apples. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's and then, like they said, there's no mention that the couch was reupholstered because of all the blood. <laughs> because, like, again, once we get the razor blade ending, it's assumed that the person who died in the couch used the razor blades on themselves to finish themselves off, which is a lot of blood being spewed out. <laughs> It might have been, it's it might have been on the floor. It might have just been on again, like maybe they just drooped their arms off the carpet or off off the couch to go onto the carpet. <laughs> and, and, uh, there, yeah, there's also a lot of assumptions. So, and we know what that yeah. means on the show. It makes an ass of you an umption. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, overall, I'm still not going to recommend this. Okay, fair enough. Gamer, are you still uh, teetering on the uh, the precipice of that uh, that fence? I don't know. I've been falling with one side or the other the entire time. The revelation of the baggie of razor blades, I was really tumbling to the one side. I had to like grab onto the top to not fall off. Um, it's kind of hard. That being said, um, for what it is, which is a short, creepy pasta with uh, limited grammar issues, honestly. Um, it's pretty competent when you look at it like that. However, t- to me, the ending is a little weak. Um, like it's laid out like uh-huh. it's supposed to be some big revelation, but it's so uh-huh. it's soft. Like instead of a whoa, it's more of a okay. At least that's the kind of vibe I got when I read it. It mm-hmm. just didn't hit hard. Mm-hmm. Weird. Okay. So that's why it's no, no. Hard. yeah. And like it, it's written okay. The premise is good. Um, but it doesn't capitalize on the whole premise and everything. It's a good short story. It's fine, but it's not more than that. Hence, why partial. Realistically, the the mention of razor blades in a baggie doesn't actually hurt my uh, feeling on the story. It should be in a little box, probably. Um, but yeah, like even with me viewing the the razor blades in a more malicious tone, it's still it, it took me a bit to get there because it's like, here's a baggie. And then I found out that the baggie is razor blades. And then I had to be, be like, okay, so baggie, razor blades, that means she may commit suicide. Then why was she giving it to the kid? Is it malicious? Like, I had to do a bunch of thinking instead of just being, bam, that happened. Bam, it's malicious. I'm trying to kill the kid. Bam, right away. Bam. <laughs> like, <laughs> there was no bam. It was like a really, really slow burn that I had to do the footwork for, you know? Is yeah, it was, it was. There's no sudden gunshot. It was more of like a as like as like a fuse is being lit and like slowly going down a very long fuse to a bomb. Yeah. And even the even the bomb like it like. Yes, exactly. it's like, or it's the com- one of those comedic bombs that just says bang. Yeah, exactly. actually. <laughs> okay, so that was my so. Or it's just the ending yeah. didn't the twist not twist ending the reveal ending didn't have enough of a reveal basically mm-hmm. at least not enough impact of the reveal in my opinion okay but um, it is still a relatively good story for what it is so is that a partial, yeah, a partial <laughs> okay yeah still on that fence yeah because it's good but uh, there's enough stuff that bothered me or didn't impact me enough that I'm still leaving a partial. I can't recommend it one way or another. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Is the true definition okay. of part. Yeah. All right. So 
I guess that's yeah. Uh, one one rec- full recommendation, one partial recommendation, and one non recommendation. <laughs> so do with that what you will, audience. Yeah. <laughs> if you decide to check out this story yourself, if your mind is anything like uh, any of ours, then you may think the same way. Exactly. Uh, but that will be it for this week's episode. So if you like what you heard, or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted. Whether it be on... Nope. <clears throat> uh, we're all on Twitter. Mikey's at the East Dance for Evil. The Gamer and Yell is at the Gamer and Yell, but without that W at the end, because the name is very long. Yeah. And I'm at Review Cultist. I'm also on Blue Sky as Review Cultist, so you can check me out there. Uh, you can also send us emails at aldentebrigamortis at gmail.com. That's A-L-D-E-N-T-E-R-I-G-A-M-O-R-T-S at gmail.com. Where you can also leave us suggestions for other creepypastas, SCPs, spooky things. You creep it, we'll peep it. Yeah. And if you'd like to help support our show financially, you can go to Patreon. Select the back tier that supports that. We have two on five dollar tiers with special episodes, early access, extra content. To all our patrons helping support the show, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. As always, we very much appreciate that. And to our listeners and the authors of these stories, thank you immensely. Because without your listenership, you'd be like screaming into the void. Underneath the couch, in the dark, where hands grab you. Mm-hmm. And if you're, <laughs> and if you didn't write these stories and submit them to online contests and uh, ha- get them, get your story archived uh, and and see online, we really wouldn't have much of a show because we have nothing to talk about. So thank you. Until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I'm Mikey the East End Shrivel, and I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And this has been Al Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well.